Hi everyone, it's a sketch of fashion drawing tutorials and in this lesson we are going to render a Dolce & Gabbana lace dress from Spring Summer to 2020 collection. And Vicky, thank you very much for the suggestion. So I just listed the markers that uh, we are going to use in this tutorial. And uh, let's start from her hairstyle. You can draw this uh, pose, you can just pause the previous clip and just redraw it. Or if you are level 3 patron, you have the access to the templates and this one is from, I guess, from June set of templates. Uh, you can also check out the May one, but I think it's the June one. So I am drawing your hair, just pay attention to the distance of your hair from your eyebrows. And um, then we have the hairband just behind your ear and we have this shape of flower. So we have uh, like many flowers there, but for now I need just overall shape. And we, when we have this parting in the center, we need to show a little bit of um, the other side hair at the back. And also um, uh, the, some hair behind your ears. So I added your earrings and now we are having the shoulder pads. Um, I'm going a little bit faster if you need, you can always pause. Uh, because this video um, takes like one hour and I tried to fasten it a little bit and it's still one hour so um, you here I'm just showing the process of drawing just in case you you need it before uh, working with textures uh, just try to to make this lengths of these lines more or less similar. It can differ a little bit just because of the tilt of her body. If she's, uh, if, if her body is turned to one side, the further side can, the details can be a bit shorter. And uh, yeah, you can see at the waistline, I made the dress a little bit wider just to show that it's not like swimsuit tight and whenever you draw closing just get rid of all the lines underneath like body lines uh, at the jugular points i'm starting drawing your necklace and uh, we have some on the sides as well for now i'm drawing just uh, the bigger stones the bigger details and smaller beads we will just add them later with a fine liner Okay, so as I told you before, I'm going to use patty, almonds, and ivory. So the patty is the darkest tone that I'm using right now to show the darkest shadows, to define her nose bridge, to show the eyelids, the shadows uh, below her nose, uh, to show a little bit nostrils. Try to draw the nostril wings very close to the holes of your nostrils. This will make your nose more delicate, softer. And, um, uh, well, we have more shadows on the other side because it is really small and uh, I just want to, to darken it. Um, and uh, here we have this diagonal shadow from the corner, outer corner of your eye uh, up. Then this area just below the eyes is going to be light those are cheekbones and then we have the shadows but uh, pay attention that the cheekbones the light area is quite high it's like the same level as the top of your ears some shadows under your chin like jawline uh, along the jawline then I'm showing the relief of your neck we have those lines stretching towards the jugular point and uh, generally uh, just I go along the outline to show this volume uh, and shape of her body.
So that was the darkest tone, Patty. And now I'm taking the mid tone, which is almonds. And I'm working uh, just between those two parts. You can cover the shadows. You better cover the shadows that we made with the Patty and go further. So now we we um, cover both shadows and uh, uncolored area coming closer to highlighted area. And for highlights, we have this cheekbone stretching, um, this highlight stretching from cheekbones till her mouth. Then we have her chin, the middle part of her forehead, then the outer, this, you know, the bones that we have under our eyebrows uh, on its outer edge. So, and the um, nose bridge, the to top of the nose bridge. So I left those parts uncolored and I still go uh, where I feel like there is still um, too strong uh, contrast between mid-tone and uh, darker tone. So I try to blend them well to build a good gradient. And yeah, so here we can show collarbones, some details. And you use, uh, so I'm still using almonds, you use these mid-tones to show certain details that you want to be visible, but not that much, like not too strong. Like for example, lower eyelid, you want it to be visible a little bit, but not to be very dark. So now I'm using ivory, the lightest marker in my selection of three and covering the highlights. And it's also nice because the previous two markers were a bit pinkish and ivory is a little bit yellowish. And when you use like these different temperatures, different uh, hues a little bit, uh, then it, it just adds up some contrast. Next, I'm using purple pencil and I use purple pencil for lighter skin tones to add some details, add extra shadows, like for example, Actually, I'm working in the same area that I worked uh, with the darkest marker, the, the step number one. But now also I, I can push only when I show certain specific details, like when I draw, for example, holes of your nostrils. But for other shadows, I'm not pushing on my pencil at all. You need to very softly touch the paper, like almost not touching it. Just it's it's certain way like you need to give a blurry effect, so it will look really nice. Otherwise, you will get a um, like it will look like her skin is scratched or have some it's irritated. Um, I use warm gray three for shadows. Usually the deepest, darkest shadows are like along the jawline, can be in the ears, like in the top part. Um, and warm gray two or warm gray three always work good with the skin. And you can use darker warm grays if, uh, as the skin uh, is darker. So now I'm using uh, black fine liner to, for the details. Uh, just like um, as I always do, like the lips, uh, the whole of the nostrils, also eyeliner. Um, then since uh, I imply mascara, I also show the eyelashes and um, eyebrows. Let me know if you have any problems with the drawing face or with applying uh, makeup. If you want to do something but cannot achieve it and you need some tips, you can always write uh, about any frustrations or anything that could improve your experience in um, uh, with these tutorials. You can share that in the comment section below. So fine, I like your skin and now we can start working with the dress. So now I want to define the, 
like the huge parts with the embellishment because I don't see the point of really coloring everything with the base color and then bringing back those parts with a correction pen. Because if there are certain parts with a lot of stones, we can just keep them um, like without coloring and then just work separately. So now I'm looking at the design. Uh, you can, I've uploaded the image on our Patreon page just uh, before the previous tutorial that I've uploaded because, um, yeah, we had the video between the reference image and this tutorial. And uh, you can take a look at all those details and I always recommend to you to always look at the image and try to understand why I'm doing certain things and uh, what I'm seeing when I'm drawing. So, um, and if you have spare time, it's also nice to try to use these techniques for your own ideas or for other designs with the same textures. So now I'm covering all the parts where we have just the fabric. So we have this lace and I'm using, I'm going to use two markers like of this similar hues like amethyst, the lighter one and aubergine, the darker one. Now I'm going to draw like flower shapes, but they are, you know, not perfect. Something that resembles flowers, like some scribbles, but not random scribbles, more like floral ones. So I've spread aubergine, which is dark, uh, kind of violet purple uh, marker. And I'm mixing this amethyst that is lighter one with a darker aubergine. And we're working just like with the paint. I'm just drawing this uh, scribbling flowers and um, every um, anything that you add on the like flat color adds certain information about texture like for now from distance even when you look at the screen you can feel like this flat part at the bottom and that upper part that we already worked with it is already a little bit like lace that's how lace look from a distance and uh, we have some work ahead and uh, we will further improve this. Okay, so I'm using cool, cool gray five. I'm going to use two grays for this dress. Cool gray five, cool gray four. Uh, it's uh, like you, if you use markers for your works, it's better uh, to always have cool grays, ice grays and warm grays. And I'm using cool gray because uh, we, we are working with a cool cool colors, they're called uh, their temperature. So here we have some silver like crystals. So I'm scribbling with just regular pencil in those parts. Just like really many, many circles kind of. And then I'm using correction pen, just regular one that you use uh, to hide the mistakes when you write. And uh, I push a lot on the body of the correction pen and I very carefully push on its tip. So you don't get a lot of liquid uh, coming out of its tip. And I'm doing that on both sides. I, I get those dots or shapes of different sizes and, you know, like uh, shapes. <laughs> And uh, that looks, that gives a good impression of some crystal embellishment. I can also add some uh, sort of circles uh, to show some stones along. So here I'm just, uh, yeah. So just trying to make it more or less symmetric in terms of size and because uh, it looks like some wings or something like that on both sides. Okay. And once everything dries, you need to wait a little bit more because I have, uh, I speeded up video. I'm adding 
uh, like I'm not coloring, but touching one, like making many dots with a caramel marker, um, raw sienna, caramel, anything that is darker than dark yellow will look like yellow on the top of correction pen or whiting gel pen. So you need to choose markers um, a bit darker than what you want to see. And uh, this uh, and adding some spots on this uh, drop like crystal, just like this with the uh, with a fine liner. And uh, yeah. And adding some um, highlights between those black spots that I just drew. And here we have one more drop, but it's like more upside down one. Just uh, showing a shape with the whiting gel pen. And here we have the same like uh, white crystals. So I'm scribbling with my pencil. and uh, using correction pen again. So uh, this correction pen, pencil thing, uh, is just, you use this a lot when you have some evening dresses with uh, a lot of embellishment. If you work with some sort of Elisa up dresses uh, and yeah, with a lot of stones uh, attached like crystals, uh, now I'm using more of amethyst, just darkening certain parts. And if you feel like you don't have enough of symmetry, you can use whiting gel pen and just correct the shapes. I'm going to do that when I finish everything. So here we have some red uh, stones. You can use any red or I'm using cardinal red. And here uh, we have some separate squared stones. I'm using pencil that matches uh, the amethyst. It's not su super, um, it's not identical, but uh, when I apply extra marker later, there will be almost no difference. Like if you messed up this uh, lines, they became too thin. You can always apply these stones with a correction pen. They don't have to be perfectly squared or something. This is just one way. Just keep the path and then divide it into pieces. But you can also apply it um, on on totally like violet area. So this pass stretches towards those wings. Okay, so now uh, here we have so, like diamond shapes. I'm just um, drawing some ran random things. You can draw like smaller diamond, color it inside or scribble a little bit inside of it. And here we have so many tiny pieces that I decided just to color this part and then I'll work with the correction pens. Same here. Okay, so let's make this a little bit bigger. And just uh, adding some noise inside, scribbling inside of those squares. And here we have one more drop-like crystal. 
and within those squares I'm adding highlights trying not to make them too huge so we still can see some pencil inside um, so adding tiny tiny dots Okay, some highlights inside of that drop crystal. Then we have some more. I'm just drawing them with a correction pen. And making some circles. If, now, if you've never tried working with this correction pen, you will, I think you will love the process because um, it gives pretty realistic um, results and it's easy. So you just draw like this uh change the directions and uh, this irregular flow of the liquid makes it more realistic i think because crystals they glitter so differently sometimes intense sometimes not sometimes they are um many can the um highlights they just merge together and there can be like huge area with like white spot. So there I drew some quite big spots with correction pen in the center and uh, on both sides of your shoulders. And here we have some, it's like uh, coma like shapes or um, like nine. And many, many crystals around. And some here. Our body is shorter than like real human body. So we have everything slightly closer to, the, to each other. So just below your breasts, we have less of that open area. Now, as the correction pen dried, I'm adding some caramel to show uh, some uh, yellow crystals and using petrol blue which is like dark blue um, with some green uh, pigment also in it and um, adding some petrol blue to certain stones as well you can uh, choose like out of markers that you have the ones that might work well you can also pick your own combination just remember that when you work on whiting gel pen on the top of correction pen if you want certain color just pick one that is much darker so yeah and now i'm using marsh green and you can see how light it looks on the top of that correction pen And with the just normal pencil, I'm showing the details. Here we have this kind of, we've got some C shape and adding some scribble on the top of that. Green stones on the to top of these C shapes. And I'm using brown uh, fine liner to show you can just really show the stones like drawing um, like different rectangles or any other shapes 
Um, and here I'm adding some, just like with the crystal, you can draw some lines with the, with the fine liner. But instead of a drop, we had there like something circular. Adding more of blue for some stones, so they are not white crystals, but blue crystals. And uh, adding highlights on top of those stones, so they don't look matte. And showing the shapes of certain parts drawing some scribbling a little bit on top of them to show uh, that they are not flat and using uh, my marker the amethyst to darken the area with the lace so we get more contrast between these stones and the fabric underneath and with the brown pencil, I'm scribbling where we have this gold. So you can scribble to show just crystals. You can define the shape of the stones. If let's say it's drop shape or square shape and you want to show that exactly, you can use a matching fine liner. Like for a gold one, you can use brown. For blue one, you can use dark blue or you can use a black fine liner as well. Just try to use a thinner one so it doesn't look too messy, I think. So adding extra um, highlights on the stones with correction pen. And so far I like the results. Um, this embellishment looks quite massive. And as I told you before, with the white ink gel pen you can correct the any problems with the symmetry not like uh, it's not related to the rule that we try to make both sides not symmetrical but you know this pattern is symmetrical in terms of as a pattern so the lens on both sides mm, the like motif they should be similar maybe under different angle or uh, with different lighting but same motif now using whiting uh, or not whiting white pencil and scribbling a little bit on the lace to show the pattern you would say like yeah but i can't really see that but those little details they actually tell like uh, give the final impression so yeah the devil is in the details and it's true like so now with a fine liner i'm just uh just showed certain parts that i wanted to have a more defined uh more definition uh, now starting working with uh, her skirt part and here we actually we will see a bigger uh bigger flowers on her lace uh, part so now just building the base covering everything mixing amethyst with a darker aubergine showing some shadows usually along the outline and there we have some shadow uh, because of this upper bodies and now we are going to draw these shapes of flowers really big not very uh, very loose and not specific like just general shape you can draw sometimes petals that are not attached but very close to the flower so i'm mixing amethyst with uh, aubergine and drawing the overall shape Try to be loose, like really, you don't have to draw perfect and symmetrical flowers. It will look even bad if you do so. And also try to vary mm, the sizes. So some flowers are big, some are smaller, and each shape should be unique, so they are different. You can repeat 
some flowers, but try to like uh, locate them a bit further from each other. So I'm using cool gray four and just when everything dries, you need to wait a little bit, just go along the bottom part, only bottom part of all those uh, flowers. And then I'm adding very softly, mostly in the middle, some white pencil between those shapes. Here we have some thread line. Uh, I think, yeah, we have some seams over there. And yeah, and then the next and last step is going to be taking black pencil and in the same loose way to outline the flower, you can scribble a little bit, add some uh, details, but without precision. Maybe you'll scribble a little bit the middle part of, part of the flower, or you will divide the petals. But imagine that you are talking to someone on the phone and just scribbling something on the notebook. And also make the lower lines of these flowers at the bottom a bit thicker. So I'm drawing all these uh, details and make this bottom part a bit thicker. So we imply the shadows that we have um, from this lace casting on, on the uh, fabric underneath it. So here we have some drop, uh, drop crystals. Okay. So I, um, I'm using a fine liner, like the purple one that I found uh, to draw this bit. So if you don't have uh, fine liners of different colors, you can just use a black one or use pencil, but pencil is going to be a bit pale. So a marker is going to be too thick and I'm combining blue and purple because I don't have violet. Um, fine liner like on the to match the original color so I'm mixing both and you can get the set of colored uh, fine liners you can get them in any art shop they are really they are really nice for uh, these tiny details And we have some more over here. Adding a bit of blue. It also will add some volume because I, I'm adding it on one side, like on the bottom part, and it makes those part a bit darker for all these tiny spheres. Using white ink gel pen and just going, working along these tones, framing them, adding some highlights on the top of those tones, just some tiny spots like dots or lines. Um, making the rows of scribbling, just like three rows with respect to the shape of these pads and drawing some uh, these like U shapes or something resembling a row of T's with a fine line pen using same marsh green. You can use olive green or any green actually that you like. Uh, and then scribbling a bit with a fine liner on the top and adding really strong highlights with a correction pen.
and using a bit thicker fine liner and just adding these spots on the top. And I'm doing this just to follow the design. Uh, using cool gray for that we used for the dress like for the shadows adding some shadows on her arms and uh, with her arms i did nothing uh, special i just started with the patty the darkest one on the right side then added almond uh, was coming closer to this inner side of her arm and then finished with the ivory here you just need to build a nice gradient this is warm gray too so warm gray two, uh, as I told you before, I use warm gray three and warm gray two to add the shadows on the lighter skin. So we can work a bit more with the, with the almond and let's work with this other arm. I added almond, but let's start with a uh, darker uh, patty. So. And here we add ivory and I work fast. So, um, so all these layers are still wet when I work. So they blend well, I'm using patty. And then adding some almond. And then you just color the rest with the ivory. So let's define the hemline of your skirt. So the front part is um, like more of an A shape. It um, becomes wider starting from your knees and your front leg is a little bit bent. So there we will have some, um, some faults because there's a tension point for this skirt. And always when we draw a skirt, because skirt surrounds the legs, the hemline on both sides, we draw the line that is curved upwards to show that is it's surrounding your legs. So very often, like um, when people start drawing fashion illustration, they draw a straight hemline, just like super straight and it shouldn't look like that. We should have the filling. So here the fabric, for example, it goes like this to the side and then, um, so here we, we have some folds and then it goes behind and we see that line going up and coming closer to the center. So here as well, it turns and we have this uh, sort of ellipse shape around your legs. So here we also have some folds. So this is the ellipse and it's not perfect one. And that what makes this uh, folds looking natural. So you draw something elliptic, but not perfect. And uh, the skirt is not even it is uh, more straight and shorter in the, the central part. So that's why our ellipse is kind of in the front, in the center. It, it uh, gets to inside. So now I'm using amethyst from our two markers, the lighter one, and just preparing the surface for the lace, just covering everything with it. Usually I tell to make this layer even, especially if we work with such a fabric as uh, like uh, velvet or silk. But in this case, we will have a lot of pattern and those uh, sh like all these spots that you can see where marker dried or I just made some lazy strokes they won't be that visible because of that floral pattern, so don't worry. And now I'm using Aubergine Pro Marker to show some really, really dark um, faults. So here we have some stretching towards just below your knees, we have some. 
like uh, these are really deep shadows here we have this division between this front part and uh, the side part of the skirt now i'm working with amethyst and mixing what with aubergine and adding you can see so we have this is diagonal fold and also from the bottom there is a fold stretching towards that point where we have the knee so knee is a tension point that creates the folds and also we have this ground where the fabric hits it hits the ground and it falls so we have this with darker ones some are darker some are not because some are deeper uh, and some are not that deep and what i like about mixing marker right now with this dark aubergine because as you work your marker loses the pigment it loses aubergine and it becomes lighter so you always get this variation of uh, value which makes each uh, each of these folds unique some are lighter some are dark and it happens naturally just try not to draw all these folds uh in a perfect order like one after another i'm just coloring those back uh, that back fabric a bit darker with amethyst and then here this is the fold that is stretching from her knee and i'm widening it a little bit towards the bottom and next to it there can be some smaller folds as well and uh, we can have some folds here as well darkening again the back part then on here we need to build the transition more because uh, there we have strong shadows and because her leg is again a bit in the front to show that middle part is highlighted we need to add those shadows between her legs because there the fabric could get a little bit inside between her legs and some shadows under your arms and uh, also pay attention to those folds uh, at the crotch area and with aubergine i'm adding some really dark shadows along your arm and now working with the other sides we also have these darker shadows uh, between these two parts this uh, side part and this central part of the skirt so we have there a deep fold i started with aubergine now building the gradient with the mix of amethyst and aubergine by just uh, dipping my marker into the darker one 
And here also look, here we have these very angular folds because their fabric hits the ground. Okay, adding extra of amethyst where I feel like I can just make some extra shadows or build the gradient where I feel like some dark shadows look too separate. So I'm adding a bit um, of that gradient that, that I always talk about just on its border. So it blends well with the surrounding. So here I want to darken more. Here we can build a bit more of the transition so that right side dark area doesn't look that separate. Okay, so I like it. Looks a little bit like uh, some uh, satin. Now I'm drawing, again, mixing amethyst with aubergine. I'm drawing, you can also in this case use just a bit darker uh, value of the same hue. But again, I told you that I like mixing because it gives a different, different values of the same hue and uh, uh, that gives additional effect of all these uh, shapes and all this motif having different highlights in different spots. So I'm drawing like flowers. I'm also adding some um, stems with leaves some smaller uh, flowers and then I'm using my pencil and trying to just draw these shapes in a faster manner and I make these lower lines a bit thicker so you can see on the on that leaf especially the bottom you can clearly see that I'm making this lower outline a bit thicker here and also here adding extra I don't like working with lace because uh, I don't like repetitive things like drawing all these patterns. Uh, so let me know how you feel about drawing the patterns. Does it, uh, is it therapeutic for you or you get mad as well? So I'm just outlining everything and yeah, like do it fast and uh, make everything loose and it'll be better. Better than if you carefully draw uh, each piece. Because we are um, drawing the impression of the lace. And when we take a look at some lace garments, we don't see each of that flowers perfectly. They also are usually out of focus. We have the bigger picture. So we just need to give the impression. And yeah. So for the rest of your skirt, I'm going to show everything in a bit faster manner. And yeah, so white pencil, I'm adding it in the middle of your thigh. So the, this front leg, I'm not adding it everywhere. So I want just to show that that part is prominent and it's more highlighted. And wherever you need extra shadows, you can use your black pencil like between your fingers. Yeah, and here I'm going to show everything faster. But at any point you can pause and take a look at what I've done. But trust me, this is not super fantastic motif. So don't worry about um, just uh, about anything. Just enjoy the process. Uh, remember to vary shapes, vary directions. So if you have some 
branches with the leaves and also the sizes something is big then there are some smaller uh, like elements next to it then something big and also when you have some fault you are drawing on the top of the fault try to divide that piece or distort it so maybe half of that flower is not visible because the fabric is folded there so more you take such tiny details into account uh, more realistic the final result uh, like realistically will look the final result and here you can see i'm drawing just halves or some ends of some branches with uh, leaves and as I go further I draw less and less of details I'm just at the back I'm just scribbling here are some flowers And less details at the back and also the shapes everything becomes a bit smaller at the back because it is um, they are at the further distance okay so next step black pencil and uh, I'm going to outline everything and uh, make the lower lines a bit thicker I made this uh, illustration maybe in four hours and then I squeezed it into one hour video cutting every moment that I thought is unnecessary speeding up certain parts so if it takes time to create uh, something like this it's fine this work hasn't been hasn't been done in one hour for sure so take your time uh, relax enjoy it and um, and uh, share your results with me i will be happy to see how you managed uh, to use this technique so i've done here because um you un like I explained the technique and I think you understand uh, overall how to how to achieve this result and uh, yeah so it looks quite nice right now so now I'm using white pencil and we have these folds you can find them by the shadows each like the top of the fold is between two shadow two shadow uh, like lines let's say and we highlight this top of the fold it also can be the edge like here the edge of this skirt so I'm adding those highlights I also add some highlights inside of this uh, lace shapes like flowers and leaves uh, and uh, yeah so mostly like in highlighted parts not inside of the shadows not those flowers you can also draw like anything you can draw pants you can draw jackets you can just use this technique for some crop top anything you can draw something smaller just to practice or um, just to enjoy maybe because i think it's not that difficult and it looks really good in the end so keep working with a white pencil you can also have some maybe more uh, 
different type of pattern because floral is quite classic for the lace but you can use something that is not typical for the lace and um, innovate a little bit and just like with the black pencil and all those shapes as i go further i start uh, making it less detailed just scribble and uh, show less and less at the back with uh, with my tools okay just want to add extra shadows usually when you add the details then you again start seeing um, that you need to to increase the contrast somewhere because those details they eat up the contrast now using cool gray 4 and uh, adding some extra shadows here the knee folds so let's define them better darkening the back part okay okay so for your earrings i'm just scribbling inside with a fine liner like really thin one then adding a bit of caramel for the gold using uh, using whiting gel pen outlining everything and then adding with the same um, pen just many many dots to show the like glitter adding some the same pen I'm using Sakura number 10 adding some highlights on the bridge of the nose on her chin some glitter on her cheekbones and that like eyebrow bone bone so I used uh, dusky pink for the highlights of her hair and then like it's just uh, a bit darker skin tone than like mid-tone and then using uh, warm gray three and making strokes towards the highlights so from both sides and there I'm just coloring everything and next using cool gray five while everything is still wet and uh, again making strokes towards the highlights it's important to uh, to follow the direction from the darker area towards the lighter area so and there we have the hair bands and i'm using cool gray 5 and warm gray 3 for for the back hair and then using a black pencil for to show just some thin pieces of hair like hair strands and making some strokes towards the highlighted area again you can use dark brown like really dark brown okay and i usually use silver pencil i'm using silver prismacolor premier for the highlights mulberry i'm just trying to match the colors on the of the original design then aubergine 
and then I'm going to add some gray, you know, like ice gray four, and just add many many uh, dots to show the glitter. and um, just erase some of that outline and i'm using a blender which is colorless marker to wet the surface and then I'm going to use different pinks like um, i think baby pink will work better than the cocktail pink that i tried just before so i'm just showing the central parts or parts between the petals the darker ones with uh, baby pink adding a bit of mulberry, just a little bit here and there. And then some other pink. Next, take uh, some like ice gray too. And show some just dark shadows here and there. And with ice gray one, showing more or less the outline of all those uh, flowers and then using purple pencil and uh, darkening the the center of the flower showing some petals i'm not showing all the details as you can see some of those flowers are still quite pale and subtle so using mulberry for that darker flower and still working with a purple pencil. So I really want to keep it soft and just a little bit of black in certain parts. Okay, so we are almost done. Let's add some shadows under the flower with a cool gray five. So in this lesson, we learned how to draw embellishment with stones, how to draw lace and uh, some new hairstyles, some jewelry. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for being my patron. Share your questions, suggestions, frustrations in the comment section below. And see you very soon in the next tutorial.